Hello, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin, the Medical Director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation, and today I'm going to talk about a subject very close to my heart, cryoimmunology, the past, the present, and the future of cryoimmunology. There is great interest nowadays on this topic, about this topic. So I will discuss a bit the history of cryoimmunology as I was involved in it, evidence for cryoimmune response, laboratory evidence of cryoimmunology affecting metastatic disease. Please pay attention. We are stressing the fact that cryo can be done for destruction of a local tumor, but the ability of the cryo to be as an immune therapy treating affected area with tumor and having an effect on metastatic disease in a place where no freezing was done at all. We'll review the current ongoing research with cryobulation and immune modulation. Cryoimmune therapy, uh, this is potentially, uh, we find out that there is an anti-tumor immunity created by the cryobulation. It's anecdotal, but clinically this potential has not been realized. The participating immune components in this cryoimmunology is the participation of dendritic cell function, either naturally in response to the cryo locally or enhanced by intervention. Blockade of immune inhibitory checkpoints, this is a very hot topic of research now, trying to increase the response of the body to the cryoimmune stimulus by, by working on releasing the inhibition of the checkpoints. And the third point, which is also very recently was found, the T regulatory cells are important to eliminate their effect. The T reg, they inhibit the response of the T cells that are designed to destroy the cancer. So getting rid of the T regs helps the body to put a clinical response to the cryosurgery. A very important concept here to explain is the mechanism of cell death with cryobulation, and I want to relate a bit here to the geography. Every time you freeze and you create an ice ball, there is a central area and there is a peripheral area. In the central area, you have a coagulative necrosis. The cells are destroyed and there is a mild to moderate inflammation. In the periphery, far away from the center of the freezing, there is apoptosis. Apoptosis stands for programmed cell death. Here you have, in central coagulative necrosis, you have mild to moderate inflammation. Pay attention, this is important. And here in the peripheral apoptosis, there is no inflammatory response. And we will find out that this presence or absence of inflammatory response may explain the enhancement of the cryo as an immune treatment versus having no immune response by the cryo itself. I met Dr. Ablin, who is the father of the term cryoimmunology. He was the one in the mid-60s involved in discovering the PSA, if not the originator of PSA. And um, he observed that in some patient that had cryo, a lung lesion, bone lesion disappeared after the cryo in spite of the fact that they were not treated. Only the cancer in the prostate was treated and yet he found distant metastatic response to the treatment of the local cryo on the local cancer in the prostate. So Dr. Ablin um, talked to me in the early 90s and uh, requested that I will try to do a study where I freeze the patient one time and then because it creates a vaccination in the body the first time, perhaps to give a booster in three months and see what will be the accumulative result of doing cryo consequently uh, after three months again. I smiled and I told Dr. Rablin, you know, at that time in the mid or early 90s, cryosurgery was not paid by insurance and patient had to scramble to, to have the money to pay privately to do the cryosurgery and it's not enough, it was so difficult to pay for one procedure, paying for two procedures, I told him I don't think it will fly at this time. Anyway, at that time in the mid-90s or early 90s, I was involved very much with the cryo 
uh, I was using the Endocare second generation cryo machine. And uh, I had in mind that perhaps we should create a model to prove conceptually, a proof of concept, that there is ability to freeze tumor in one location and affect the tumor in different location. They were not touched by cryo, but they will be destroyed without being touched by cryo by immunological means. So I created the model where you had a rat immune com competent rat R3227 Dunning, and we created tumor on both sides of the animal. Here you see an animal with a tumor, here an animal without a tumor. So the main tumor was implanted on the left side, on one side. A small tumor was implanted on the other side, happened to be the right side. This tumor was frozen, the main tumor was frozen. The small tumor was not frozen, but was observed. In addition to the freezing of the larger tumor, the main tumor on one side, we gave immune stimulant that created destruction in the tumor that was not treated with freezing. So the question is, what is that immune stimulant? We gave GMCSF, injection of granulocyte macrophage, colony stimulating factors, which is used very much in immunology today. This was before of the days of Provange or um, dendritic cell treatment. And in addition to that, we gave interleukin-2. But what's important, we gave the GMCSF in the area of the lymphatic drainage locally. So the immune stimulants were given locally and not systemically. Here are the results, the curves, showing what happened to the tumor itself that was frozen. Well, the tumor that was frozen and had immun immun immunotherapy obviously did not grow, stayed small. The tumor that had only cryosurgery also, they were mainly destroyed by the freezing itself. But the tumor that were not frozen and without immunology, those tumors, obviously the controls, they grew with time and actually, the, interestingly enough, the group that had immunotherapy, their growth of tumor was actually stimulated, while the controls also grew, but not at the same rate like those that had immune therapy. Now, let's look at the side of the tumor that was not frozen. So we see here the side that was not frozen, the tumor on that side, grew very slowly over 28 days. This is the group that had cryo and also immune modulators given, the GMCSF and the interleukin-2. This is the group that had only cryo and also we see there was some immunological effect by giving only cryo on one side, but not as strong as the effect giving the cryo together with the immune therapy. And obviously the control and only immune therapy without the freezing uh, did not create uh, any inhibition of growth of the tumor, which comes to show that the cryotherapy itself has some immunological effect and it could be boosted by other immunological intervention like the GMCSF or the interleukin-2. But more important than the curve of the growth of the tumor, we see here different in survival. The animals overall that had cryo and immune therapy, the immune modulators, they, some of them died, but they survived over a period of more than 160 days. Those that had only cryosurgery, less of them, but also survived. But those animals that did not have cryo and uh, they actually, and had only immune therapy, the control, they died fairly quickly. There is no lack of other studies to show that there is um, something going on with the immune system. And I'm not talking only about prostate cancer, but other models. And there is a quite a big list here of work that was done on colon cancer, on other cancers, on lung cancer. And it showed that the cryo had some effect to demonstrate immune response. The first researcher, Mata Sumara, let me pronounce it again correctly, Mat Sumara, he demonstrated in rats that there is an initial fall in the anti-tumor immunity. I say that the cryo creates like an anti-tumor immune response, but initially there is not a good tumor immunity response. And he found out this was due to activation of suppressor cells. 
those suppressor cells were discovered to be T regulatory cells that are active in the beginning, at least in this experiment. But as soon as the activation of the suppressor cell diminished, there was an anti-tumor activity that increased during a follow-up of 10 weeks. Another researcher by the name Brock et al., they used melanoma model. There was an increased tumor antigen loaded and matured dendritic cells in the tumor draining lymph nodes post cryoablation. So we see that there is tumor draining lymph nodes, they accumulated antigen loaded and dendritic cells. In humans, cryoablation increased serum level of TNF alpha, INF gamma, and tumor specific lymphocytes. So the freezing itself increased tumor specific lymphocytes four weeks after the cryoablation. In some study there was a failure to demonstrate an immune response and I want to differentiate here. We get in some animals or even in humans an immune response because immunological intervention but there is also a clinical response where the tumor is shrinking, patient lives longer, so there is difference between an immune response per se versus a clinical immune response. Very important concept to remember. In some studies, there was actually suppression, suppression of the immune response. Here is a study by Wing et al. on fibrosarcoma model in hamster. They demonstrated generation of suppressor cells after the cryoablation, inhibiting the T cell proliferation. So we find out that what inhibits the T cell proliferation and taking care of the tumor after cryo is the increase in the suppressor cells that are the T regulatory cells. Generation of suppressor cells, namely the T regulatory cells, was correlated with inferior prognosis of threats treated with cryosurgery versus surgical excision of the tumor. So we have here an explanation that the suppressor cells do not allow the body to get the full potential of putting an immune fight after cryosurgery. Let's talk now about a very important concept, we call it the danger model of immune response. The immune system evolved not to discriminate cell from non-cells. If you have non-self cells, slow mutation, the body doesn't, doesn't attack it with the immune system because it has to detect and respond to tissue distress or abnormal cell death. That explains how some tumors could grow to a large size without the body actually uh, responding until some of the cells die or the, some of them become necrotic and then the body tries to put immune response, but may be too late. Cells dying by necrosis activate destructive T cells against the dangerous entity. That dangerous entity could be a tumor or infection coming from the outside or the inside. So there is concept that you need a danger created in the body in order to, pre, to prime the immune system to respond to the cryosurgery or any other immunological intervention. There are some samples in the history of medicine where patient got infection in the leg and their tumor disappeared because of the infection. And they explain it by having the infection as a danger model, uh, priming the immune system to go after the cancer. The necrotic cells release cytokines and chemokines. These are substances that attract uh, the immune system cells to come to the location where there is trouble. Dendritic cells reach the damaged tissue. The dendritic cells, I should say, are antigen-presenting cells. So they arrive to the damaged tissue. The dendritic cells, the uptake tumor antigen, here is their name, antigen-presenting cells, in the background of inflammation and cytokines. So you have to pay attention. There must be a background of inflammation and enough cytokines to generate uptake by the dendritic cell to bring them without interference to the T cells to train them. The activated and mature dendritic cell display tumor antigen and migrate to the nearest lymph node to present it for T cell activation. That's why they call dendritic cells antigen presenting cell. They are not the only antigen presenting cell, there are other types of cells, but they are the main one that we are talking about. So let's look schematically. You have cryoablation and you have destruction of tissue 
and you have a menu of antigens spilling in the local tissue and the body generates cells around it that are dendritic cells and they uptake they uptake the tumor cell, the antigen, and they travel to the lymph nodes in order to activate the tumor-specific T cells. The activated T cells affect and destroy the tumor cells. So the question is, why doesn't it always happen? Why is it in some cases there is immune response clinically also, uh, or immune response in the animal and sometimes not? What is the reason? So here is one schematic that I'm bringing it in the beginning of the lecture for drilling to you the concept that when you have cryoablation and it creates antigen and the antigen presenting cells, the dendritic cells, they bring it to the T cells. There is another type of a T cell, the T regulatory cell. And that T regulatory cell, we have to understand what boosts it, what depletes it, because by removing the effect of the T regulatory cell, will enable the T cell to be activated and put an immune response. So let's see how it happens in the upcoming slides. 